want to get to these questions. When adultery happens within the marriage, what can be done or take place to restore trust, especially when there's deep emotional scarring? So uh, I'll go ahead and talk about that. So I'll talk about from a testimony standpoint and biblical. Um, so um, from a testimony standpoint, um, early on in our marriage, um, I did not do actual sexual or physical adultery, but I consider it emotional adultery because I was addicted to pornography. Um, and so in self-gratification, that hurt my wife, um, and it definitely was damaging to our marriage and relationship. Um, so in that, she went to God and prayed to God for him to change my heart and to change me, and we went to therapy to actually help us to get back on the right track. Uh, so we definitely advocate therapy. Now as far as like scripture, I go to Exodus um, as an example. As far as the Sinai covenant, when Israel and God actually had that covenant, it was a marriage. And so Israel committed adultery with the golden calf. And so we can look at the examples of what actually happened there to kind of move forward. So you can read the story for yourself, but the, to go a little bit deeper on that, um, you see Moses in prayer and intercession for the nation. Then you have, as far as transparency about the issues that actually happened, and then Israel was repentant, so they, they repented, and then God forgave and God restored. So in that, you got to have prayer, you got to have actual um, transparency, you got to have um, repentance, forgiveness, and then God is the one who restores and renews the covenant. Right, that's good. Amen. Amen. Yeah, one thing is one thing to apologize, but repentance is when you change your direction. So change your behavior. Amen. Can I, can I, can I add it into that too? Yes, sir. Um, I also want to say, and I, and I want this to be a discussion. I don't want us to just be locked into a box because I believe our different uh, uh, perspectives is good. Um, me and my wife have both survived, um, you know, adultery in, in our marriage. And we have gotten past it and we have grown stronger. And I'll say this. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. At the point you have forgiven each other, at the point you know that God has forgiven you and God is bringing about restoration, then we also, as a couple, have to take part in that forgiveness process. And the worst way to, to um, um, uh, try to get past something is to keep bringing up the past. Amen? That's why I brought the scripture up. Old things have passed away. Behold, paying attention, he's saying in the scripture of behold, when it says behold, it's saying, look, I have made all things new. What happened historically needs to stay in the past. Amen. We need to forgive, and I know it's hard to forget, but you need to let it go and just trust God. It's a hard thing to do, but you have to look at the person that's in front of you and say, this is my wife, this is my husband, this is my spouse, and I believe that God is doing a new thing in them, and God is doing a new thing in me, and I am not going to try to mix the, the past with God's new. I'm not going to try to mix what happened yesterday with the new thing that God is trying to do today. Because if you try to mix the thing that happened yesterday, you will always spoil, you will always cause the new thing to expire premature. Case in point, if you have uh, uh, two tomatoes, you got a new one and you got one that's spoiled. The new tomato is the th new thing that God wants to do. The spoiled tomato is the old things that we need to get, get away from. Amen. If you take that old tomato and put it with the new tomato, the new tomato will begin to spoil premature. It will begin to expire premature because it's too close. It wasn't supposed to mix. It was supposed to be separated and it's supposed to be forgotten about. God is saying, stop bringing up the past. Forget, I understand it happened, but if you agreed to forgive and move forward, stop talking about it. Don't That's bring it up. Good. That's good. Move forward. Don't cause the blessing that God is trying to do in the new thing to be expired premature because you keep bringing up the old things. That's good. Stop bringing up the old things. Somebody say it in the crowd. Stop bringing up the old things. 